Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to break down in depth each step of the primary exam of your patient assessment so you don't miss a thing. So let's get started. The primary assessment is your time as an EMT or paramedic to find and treat immediate life threats to your patient. This time we are bypassing the angulated fractured arm and looking for more important things like the flailed chest, the tension pneumothorax, an occluded airway, or maybe an uncontrolled arterial hemorrhage. Let's jump over onto the computer and break it all down. All right, guys, the first thing that you absolutely need to do within your primary assessment is as you're walking up to your patient, you're gonna do your 10 foot assessment or that general impression. You're gonna look at them. This is your visible assessment only. It's nothing, you haven't even laid your hands on it uh, on the patient. You are literally doing this from the 10 foot mark, okay? Across the room, do they look sick? Do they not look sick? Do they look pale, cool, clammy? How do they visibly look to you? That would be your general impression, okay? Then you're gonna go down into your level of consciousness. This is when you approach your patient, you first put your, uh, you first interact with them, you say hello, uh, you, you know, try and figure out are they alert? Are they, you know, responsive to a certain type of stimuli, or are they unresponsive? You'll see a uh, a little card pop up in the top uh, the top of your screen. That is my video on AVPU, which is the acronym for level of consciousness. So if you're unsure about what AVPU is, or you just want to, you know, study up on it, make sure to click the card at the top of the screen. It's a it's a great video. So uh, after you figure out the level of consciousness, if you're able to get the patient's chief complaint, that's your next step. And remember, the chief complaint is what the patient tells you. It is not what you deem their problem to be unless they're unresponsive and can't voice that or semi-responsive and can't voice that to you. So if they say, I'm having crushing chest pain, that would be their, their chief complaint. I'm having crushing chest pain. The ABCs, guys, are critical in your primary assessment. Every single patient contact that you do has to have a ABC evaluation done within the primary assessment. Now remember, these the, the ABCs are looking for one and one thing only, the life threat, okay? Nothing else. We're not looking at the broken leg here. We're not looking at a little laceration. We are looking at what is going to off your patient within the next few minutes. What can you fix to delay the crashing of your patient? So the first thing that you have to evaluate is A, which stands for the airway, okay? And you're going to use the acronym OASS to do your evaluation on the airway. And there's a great video that I did uh, previously on the acronym OASS or Open Assess Suction Secure. It'll be popping up uh, in the, in the top corner of this video so you guys can click on that but make sure to come back and watch the end of this video um, remember that if you don't have an airway okay if you don't have an airway you cannot proceed down okay because if you don't have an airway you don't have the next thing and that is breathing okay if you don't have an open airway, you can't get air in to be able to breathe. If the patient doesn't have an open airway, they can't get the air in to breathe, okay? That's why you can't jump and skip through these. Uh, you pretty much have to, you know, A, B, and C it, okay? So with breathing, we're gonna do a couple things, okay? The first is we're going to check the ventilation status of your patient, okay? And with that, you're going to do three things. You're gonna look, you're gonna listen and you're gonna feel, okay? And when I say look, you're literally going to look at the chest, right? You're gonna see it, you know, you see it rise, you're gonna see it fall. Is it equal? Is it, you know, a flailed segment where one side is up when the other side is down? What does it look like? Is there any trauma to it? Do I need to put an occlusive dressing on an open wound? Do I need to bandage something? What does it look like, okay? Then I'm gonna listen to it. I need to listen and auscultate with my stethoscope all lung, all, you know, lung fields, whether it be in trauma or medical, you have to do this for every single patient. 
Are those breath sounds equal on both sides? Is there wheezing? Are there absent lung sounds on one side or the other? We need to be able to find this out, okay? And the last thing we're gonna do is put our hands on these patients and we're gonna feel them, okay? You're gonna feel the chest. Does it feel like a normal chest should? Is it rounded? Do you feel all the ribs? Is there crepitus? The next thing within breathing that we're gonna do is we're going to treat any type of life threat to breathing, okay? So in here, if you have to put on a dressing, like an occlusive dressing, you're gonna do that, okay? What about giving oxygen, okay, to your patients? Non-rebreather oxygen, nasal cannula oxygen, or even BVMing our patients, bagging our patients with the bag valve mask because their, their respirations are inadequate, okay? Or their ventilations are inadequate. Maybe they're too fast, too slow. Maybe they're not rhythmic. Um, this is where we're going to attack to attend to those life threats, okay? And once we finish with breathing, we're gonna move down to C, and that is circulation, okay? And here, the first thing that we wanna check is pulses, okay? Do they have radial pulses that are equal on both sides? Every single patient contact that I do, I always check a radial pulse as I'm evaluating the airway you can do certain things simultaneously as you're talking to somebody you can sit there and go oh hey let me feel your pulse hi sir what's your name blah 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 as you're feeling the pulse now you're not sitting here for 30 seconds a minute trying to figure out what their pulse is 80 and regular we're not doing that we're just finding out if it's there if it's fast if it's slow that's it and if it's regular that's it you can feel that in 10, 15 seconds, okay? The next thing that you're gonna be looking for is um, any bleeding, okay? Now this isn't bleeding like venous bleeding or capillary bleeding, this is arterial bleeding, okay? Bleeding that can kill them if you don't put on a tourniquet, okay? This isn't the oozing that you might see from a fractured leg, this is the arterial spray that you might see if somebody is, you know, bleeding out of their neck or something like that or out of their arm, okay? What can you do to fix bleeding before they hemorrhage too much that you lose a blood pressure and they, uh, they go into cardiac arrest? The last thing that you're going to do is you're going to check the skin, okay? And you want to look at the color. Is it pale? Is it normal? Is it uh, blue and cyanotic? Okay, what color is the skin? The next thing for skin is you're going to take a temperature. Okay, and you're going to feel the skin to see if it's hot. You know, maybe they're hyperthermic or maybe it's really cold and they're hypothermic. Or maybe they're, you know, normal temperature, normal body temperature, okay? We should be feeling our patient's skin. Typically, I'm also evaluating the temperature of someone's skin as I'm checking the pulses because I can feel their skin, uh, their skin temperature uh, when I'm doing that. The last thing is the condition of their skin. Now, a lot of people don't understand what they mean by condition. All right, the way I explain it is, is it intact, right? Does it look okay? Are there, you know, bruising? Is there, you know, is there tenting? Is there uh, all of these other things that you can see? Are there diaphoretic? Is there, you know, lacerations all over the place? What is their skin condition like? Does it look like this person's been, you know, through the desert and back, or does it look like they just came out of the spa kind of kind of thing? That's the way I like to picture it. So guys, that is your ABCs. Remember that ABCs are circular, okay? And what I mean by that is as we go down through ABC, we go back up towards A, Okay, and then we go back down to C again, okay? This doesn't ever stop. 
No time through our patient contacts do we just sit there and go, oh, ABCs I did once, and now they're done forever. We keep evaluating our ABCs. If something changes in our patient, I go all the way back to A. I go, yep, A still good, B still good, C still good, awesome, okay? This is what we have to remember to make sure that we don't miss one of these life threats. We might see it in the beginning, we might see it develop later on in the call. That is why it is imperative that you guys make that circular motion, airway breathing circulation, something changes, back to airway breathing circulation. That's it for today's video, guys. Hopefully, you now have the confidence to go in and rock your medical or trauma practical skill station or be more in tune with what you need to be looking for on your next patient assessment. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.